Joining us now with his reaction, Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton. Good morning to you, Senator. Good morning, Ainsley. Good, Good morning. to be on with all of you. Well, great to have you. What's your reaction to that, and why shouldn't he have access to classified documents? <laughs> you know, Ainsley, it's really remarkable that Adam Schiff, who's been the senior Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee for years, gets removed from it, and then he immediately goes onto TikTok, the Chinese Communist propaganda app, a security and privacy Trojan horse in America to complain about it. Uh, maybe this is one reason he should be removed from it, for not having any sense to not use such an app. But more seriously is that, as Speaker McCarthy said last week, neither uh, Adam Schiff nor Eric Swalwell would get a security clearance if they were in the private sector, if they were just a junior soldier in the military, if they were an employee applying for a job in the executive bra branch. Adam Schiff misused classified information from the intelligence committees for years to lie about the Russia collusion hoax during the Trump era. And Eric Swalwell had a personal relationship with the Chinese spy. Speaker McCarthy made the right decision here. Senator, I want to ask you about the National Archives. They've sent out a request to all former presidents and vice presidents as the search for classified documents across the country seems to expand from Donald Trump to Mike Pence to Joe Biden. Um, what uh, in, in I would love to ask you, like, how big a problem do you see this um, as classified documents floating around? Some say it's a dirty little secret inside of Washington, D.C., that there's classified documents everywhere. But one of your colleagues, Rick Scott, has said, look, I'm a senator. I only get to see classified documents inside of a classified setting. So which is it? Is it that classified documents are really unsecured? That's the dirty truth. Or are these individuals like Joe Biden taking classified documents out of a classified setting and in some inexplicable manner. Well, Will, uh, Rick Scott is right that as senators where we typically review classified documents either in a secure facility or maybe with the right kind uh, of staffing who have security clearances couriered to our personal offices to review briefly. Um, it, it may be different in the executive branch. This is something Congress needs to review, especially needs to review apparently the handling of these documents in the transition for presidents and vice presidents out of office. But the more fundamental question is whether the mishandling of these documents in any of these cases caused any damage to national security. That's why Republicans and Democrats alike are outraged that this administration is refusing to show us these documents. We had a hearing earlier this week with the Director of National Intelligence, and we did not see a single document. We didn't even have a single document characterized. And we're, we're being told that they can't happen until the special counsels have conducted and completed their investigations. Well, one of these special counsels isn't even on the job yet. This is nothing but a stone wall to prevent members of the Intelligence Committee from doing our oversight responsibility, which is distinct and separate from any criminal investigation. In fact, my colleague on the, on the Intelligence Committee, Senator Susan Collins, says this is the worst stone wall she's seen in 26 years in the Congress. So I really can't answer your question about the seriousness of it until the administration allows us to conduct mm. our legitimate oversight responsibilities. And until they do, there's going to be consequences in the Congress for them. I know you're the, you're the legal guy. You're not supposed to jump to conclusions. But if someone doesn't want to see, let you see the contents of the documents, knowing their own party is going to have an aneurysm and blow up on them on the Senate floor, and it's worth that type of blowback, how bad are those documents? How incriminating are they? How disturbing are they? Well, I think many senators after this week are now beginning to ask that question. You know, senators who are willing to give these former officials the benefit of the doubt now wonder, like, what could be in these documents that the administration is stonewalling in such an unprecedented fashion? Right. Um, now, I also want to point out, Brian, that this is yet another example of the Department of Justice's double standards. You know. Donald Trump had his personal residence in Mar-a-Lago raided. Mike Pence had FBI agents showing up at his home within hours of notifying the government. Yet when Joe Biden discovered personal do or classified documents at his personal office, the FBI cooperated cordially with his personal attorneys, allowed those attorneys without security clearances to review them. Another example of these double standards is that there were a lot of leaks last August about what may have been in the papers at Mar-a-Lago. 
CNN already had a story this week about what was at Mike Pence's house, yet we haven't had a single leak about any of point. the documents found at Joe Biden's office or home. That's why it's even more important that we get to the bottom of what was in these documents and what damage, if any, was caused to national security. Again, that's totally separate from the Department of Justice's criminal investigation. Yes, yeah, Senator, we want to also talk to you about Russia because we've just given them, given them promised them all, all of these tanks from the United States, and Russia is perceiving that as Europe and America America's direct involvement, so they hit Ukraine with missiles. What's your reaction? Well, I welcome the decision by Joe Biden and Germany to provide these tanks, uh, but it's long overdue. Uh, this is consistent, too, with Joe Biden's uh, timid, cautious approach to this war. You could say that he even tempted Vladimir Putin to go for the jugular with his weakness and appeasement of Putin in 2021. But as the war was about to begin and since the war began last year, you've seen a consistent pattern of the president declining to provide certain kinds of weapons or intelligence that would allow Ukraine to defend its own territory. Within, within a few months, they'll provide the weapons and intelligence, but at the cost of thousands of lives and more lost territory that Ukraine has to fight to take back rather than defending in the first place. I predict you're going to see it again in the future with long, long range missiles and drones and fighter aircraft. The simplest and quickest way to end this war is for Ukraine to win it and for us to back Ukraine to the hilt right. with the weapons and the intelligence that its army needs to defend its own territory from an unprovoked invasion. Right. And just real quick, there's a story in the New York Post today, not denied. The Pentagon says, we don't have the tanks available right now in our stocks. We don't have 31 M1A2 Abrams tanks to send over. Really? Yeah, this is, again, part of the troublesome decision, Brian. If this decision had been made a year ago, these tanks might already be in the fight. Now, hopefully, the Europeans, uh, our European partners who have the German Leopard 2 tanks will be able to get those more quickly into the fight. But if we got them to Ukraine, Ukraine would have been able to use them to defend their territory or in a spring offensive right. that's likely coming to try to retake their territory. It's understandable that you can't just snap your fingers and put a 70-ton vehicle in Ukraine, have them trained and ready to go on it. But that's why these delays are so long or so yeah. bad. I, I did think we had 31 laying around I, in, in a country this large with a military this big. I know you would. 31 yeah. seems like a low number. Come on. Uh, Senator Tom Cotton, always great. Thank you.